make, taking a step forward, taking a step forward towards my goal, my dream. Maximizing your ability, that's why I came here. It was just always a dream just to come in and a business to come here to win. Alabama's always been a big part of my life. Anybody's dream to go up Alabama fan, be from Alabama, and then go play at the University of Alabama. I'm telling you, this place is rocking right now. Welcome everybody to another edition of the Nick Saban Show presented by TruckWorks along with the head coach of the Crimson Tide. I'm Chris Stewart. Coach, we've been here for some amazing ball games. Hard to top what we saw today. Congratulations. Yeah, well, most of the weird stuff that's happened here usually doesn't go in our favor. True. Um, but today, it did. But I got to say, our, our players showed tremendous resiliency you know, in the fourth quarter. We got a couple stops on defense when we needed it. We got a critical turnover on the punt, um, took advantage of it. And you know, that play we scored on at the end is actually a play we practiced. Um, so you got to have a little luck to go with it. But players try to position themselves where they create some space, like basketball. And IB did it great. And, um, Jalen threw a great ball. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a reality check for us, though, uh, in terms of how we played overall in the game. Um, got two touchdowns called back because of penalties early and, you know, struggled to stop the run on defense. So we got work to do. Coach, almost symbolic of the season thus far, wasn't it? The way your team won, as you pointed out, less than perfect, and yet continued to gut it out, grind it out, and get the job done. Yeah, it's all about having resiliency, playing for 60 minutes, not giving up, uh, which I think is a great lesson for all the folks out there watching because uh, it'll help you be successful in life. You know, you can have no great victories unless you can overcome adversity, and our guys have done a tremendous job of that all year long. Incredible first half, incredible ball game. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. McClellan comes to the left of the quarterback. Here's the handoff, big hole, McClellan into the backfield, and he is down to the 45-yard line. Quickly, back to the line. Here's Milrow, looks for an out route. Grab is made by Burton. He'll step out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Here's Milrow, gets the snap. He'll stand in, looks and throws across the middle. Catch is made, and it's run by Malik Benson down to the left sideline. He'll spin inside the numbers at the 19-yard line. The throw, Big. huge lane open across the middle. Now with the ball at the 22-yard line. Milrow stands in, looks left, throws left. Stepping out of bounds with the ball is Burton after making the reception. It's a tight end. Here now the give, back up the middle. Roy Dell runs up the pipe, and he is in for a touchdown. Jaden Roberts threw a pretty block, really nice, and opened up the running lanes for Roy Dell. Williams, touchdown Alabama. Boy, heck of an open and drive there by Alabama. Great field position, started off with an incredible defensive play. You're able to overcome a mental mistake by J.C. Latham by picking up the third and long across the middle to Benson. Heck of a drive to open this game. Alston stays in and running back. Thorne is under center. He'll hand it off to Alston. He'll spin out of a tackle and get to the goal line, and he is in for a touchdown. Damari Alston with a three-yard touchdown run. Jalen Key met him in the hole, but he did a little spin move and was able to break three and prevent Key from really wrapping up on him good. He did just enough to get across the goal line. Alex McPherson into a 10th year. Milrow didn't expect the snap, but he saves it from falling. He'll then take off running, loads up and throws, finds a man loose. That was Isaiah Bond, 46-yard line. Milrow again back to the right side. Catch made by Jermaine Burton, who dances way. Milrow alone in the backfield, stands, takes off running. He's got room. He's directing traffic, and he'll slide to a stop at the 10-yard line. Very calm, I will hold it. Neyland Hibbert will snap it. The kick is up. 
And there's a flag down. The kick was good, but there is a flag down at the 14-yard line. Austin is the running back. Peyton Thorne, the quarterback. They come to the near side. Little toss to Johnson. And Javarius Johnson takes it in for the touchdown. A 12-yard run on the taw after the toss from the quarterback, Peyton Thorne. And Auburn has taken the lead. Well, in this offense, if you want to know where the ball's going, just watch the tight ends. They are pretty much the lead blockers on every run. A little misdirection here, but they pull Luke Dill out, and he's the guy that leads around. Until the half. Bama down by four. Here's Nova. He looks long, trying to find a man behind the defense. It's caught, and here goes Jermaine Burton all the way. Touchdown, Alabama. A 68-yard play. That's what you were looking for. Beat him at the line of scrimmage. DJ James was in coverage for Auburn. I guess he thought he had safety help, but the safety was in the middle of the field, and Burton beat him within five to six yards of the line of scrimmage. Easy catch and throw, and a great job of recognizing what the defense was doing and knowing where to go with the football. How about that? Milro to Jermaine Burton. His seventh receiving touchdown of the year. And then from the 49-yard line. Thorne, the quarterback. Back up, backs up, steps up. Let's this one fly into the end zone. It's knocked away. Intercepted by Alabama. That will be Terry and Arnold. Terry and Arnold will intercept it. And Alabama has ended the half with a 17 to 14 lead. Coach, a quick start for your team in this ball game, but unfortunately some miscues kept it from creating some real separation. Yeah, well, I, I thought our players were really ready to play, and they really come out and played well. I mean, they went down the field and scored. Uh, scored on the second drive. Got called back because of the penalty. Uh, then we had the punt. Um, and then we had another one called back because of a penalty. Uh, and actually had a chance to score late in the game and got a penalty that stopped the drive. So, and then we missed a field goal. So, um, a lot of things we need to clean up, but I, I thought we played great. But I, I think you're right, is one of the things that we wanted to do in this game was try to get ahead in the game. So they just couldn't run the ball and stay in the game. And we didn't do a good job of stopping it. So that allowed them to stay in, the, in, in their, what they wanted to do because we didn't take advantage of the opportunities that we had to get ahead in the game. 17-14 to score at the half. Stay with us. we got more coming up here on the Nick Saban Show, presented by TruckWorks. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Coach, up three at the break. What would you tell them at halftime? Well, you know, I told everybody, I challenged them and just say, What's your passion? How much passion do you have to want to win this game? Because it's going to take a lot for us to go out there. We get the ball first in the second half. We got to go out and do something with it. And we got to go stop the run on defense. And we got to play better in the second half. So passion is all about how much you love something and how much purpose you have, sense of purpose, and what you want to do to try to accomplish it. So um, that was the message. Um, they play with more spirit in the second half. We didn't play the way we wanted to play all the time, uh, but it was great resiliency for us to come out on top. Let's take a look at the second half highlights, including a very special one at the end. Two yards longer than an extra point. The snap by Neelan Pivot, the hold by Burnett, and the kick is up and good. Right there for Coach Oates' fellas. From the 28-yard line, here's Auburn now looking with a wide-open receiver. They lost him, and Javarius Johnson with another touchdown for the Auburn Tigers. They totally lost him. There was nobody. One-yard field goal try by Alex McPherson from Fort Payne High School. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So a 21, the junior from Mount Macedon, Australia, has averaged 41 yards a punt today. He is in the long snap. He's got it, and he'll boot it away. 
fair catch being made. And it's loose. It's picked up by Alabama. Oh, it's down the near side, and they call the play dead. They call the play dead. It was Jahat Campbell who picked it up. They'll say it was dropped. They said it was dropped. He never had he possession never had of that. Possession. Possession. He never had possession he never of the had ball. possession of the one-yard line. Here's the snap. Milrow stands in. Let's everybody get downfield. Still standing. He throws into the end zone. He caught it. It's caught. It's caught by Isaiah Bond. Caught by Isaiah Bond in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. The Crimson Tide with 32 seconds to go in the ball game. Throwing a Hail Mary into the corner of the end zone. Twenty-seven, twenty-four final, and again, we got a crazy one to go our way, Coach. Yeah, we did. Um, but you know, we made plays when we had to make them. You know, the defense got a couple stops when we needed to in the fourth quarter. Um, we got a big break on the punt. Uh, it was a great punt, high hanger. Um, Thirty did a great job. Jihad did a great job of covering right in front of the guy. The guy was a little off balance, misjudged the ball a little bit, so that gave us a huge break. Um, and then. We, we, the, the last, we got the ball on whatever yard line, seven yard line or whatever. And, um, you know, we make the fourth down and one. So um, then we snap the ball early, bad snap. So we got to overcome that. When we get a penalty on the next play, we cross the line of scrimmage, could have taken off running and probably got down to the five. And um, then we make the play at the end of the game to win. So that kind of sums up the season. <laughs> <laughs> now we've come back in the second half all year long. Special indeed. 27-24, the final. Alabama defeats Auburn. We've got more coming up. Stay with us here on the Nick Saban Show, presented by TruckWorks. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by T-Mobile, bringing 5G to hometowns across the SEC and proud partner of Alabama football. Coke with zero sugar and refreshingly delicious. Is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. Coach, I thought we had the turning point figured out about four different times in the ball game, but it turned out, I guess, to be down at the end. Yeah, from the muff, muff punt on yeah. uh, to making a fourth and one uh, in a critical spot, uh, taking the clock in the game to score, and then making the fourth down play after a couple Still advised plays that we already talked sure. about. So um, that that's the difference in the game. Coach, everybody that loves Alabama loved this outcome. Everybody that is a part of your staff celebrated and enjoyed the outcome. But I dare say nobody more so than Traveris Robinson did in this one played in the stadium where he was a part of some big wins as a Tiger. Yeah, well, T Rob does a great job for us and he, you know, really worked hard this week and um, you know, coming from Auburn. Sometimes it's tough, but he, he has really done a great job for us, and he's got a great personality. He's loved by everybody. The players love him. He's a great recruiter. He's got a great family. I can't say enough about the guy. All right, Coach, let's go Mercedes-Benz All Access with Coach T-Rob. Good. Come on back, now. Come on back. Don't go nowhere. Here's your rest. Originally from Miami, Florida. Um, played my college ball at Auburn. Went to the NFL for a couple of years. A um, year with the Falcons, a year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then I got into coaching. I always knew I wanted to be a coach. Um, something that I always you know, had a passion to do. Didn't think I was a good enough player to play professionally, but had an opportunity. So I um, took full advantage of it. Um, as soon as it was over, went back to college and, and started my, my, my coaching career there. I was a student coach for a year, and then I was a graduate assistant under Tommy Tuberville. Um, and that's when I met Coach Muschamp and those guys, and you know, kind of got connected that way. And the rest was history. Playing at Auburn and, and coaching at Alabama, um, you know what, to be honest with you, I, I really hadn't thought about it that much. Um, for me, it was just more of an opportunity. Um, an opportunity to come play for one of the best coaches that ever did it, who's a defensive-minded guy, who's a defensive back guy. I mean, who wouldn't do that? Um, it's a great opportunity. Um, it's a great place, um, historical place, and, and a chance to, to, to win. 
was very important to me and my family. My philosophy as a coach is to number one, be a player's coach. Um, I want our guys to be comfortable coming in to speak with me um, about anything, not just football. And I know, you know, football is, is the reason that I'm here. Um, but at the end of the day, that's not the, the entire reason. Um, it's to pour into these young men and give them a chance and give them some of my life learned experiences that they don't have to go through some of the difficult things that I went through, but also they can go through some of the enjoyable things that I went through. My wife, Mandisa, her and I went to um, high school together. Um, we have three kids. Um, so we have Tyson, who is 10. We have Travis, who is seven. And then my daughter, she lives in Birmingham with her mom. My 10-year-old, um, he, he, he's kind of a, a smart guy. And um, he always talked to me about football. He gave me plays before the game. What should we do? He's a very analytical kind of a guy. My, my seven-year-old, he's a little bit of a knucklehead. And um, <laughs> he loves to play football. I'm excited about them. So if they continue to do it and they want to play all well, we're going to get them coached up and get them ready to go. But, you know, we'll see. Coaching under Coach Saban is, 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 is very, 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 very beneficial and rewarding. It's been really good. Um, I'm, I, I really enjoy being around him every single day, getting to ask him some of the questions that, you know, probably people in, in the world would love to ask him and they don't have the, the ability to do that. Um, and I think just having that relationship with him and being in there every day with him and coaching with Coach Saban and being a part of this program is, is a tremendous honor. Not anyone get a chance to coach with Coach Saban. So you got to be able to, to think fast. You got to be able to react fast. You got to be able to handle the pressure of, of, of being one of the top programs in the country. Um, so just having that opportunity and, and very, you know, grateful for the opportunity to be able to do this. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Coke with zero sugar and refreshingly delicious. Is Coca-Cola zero sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. Coach, our player feature fittingly would be the offensive line. They did some great things for you today. And your senior from Buford, Georgia, Seth McLaughlin's young man, we'd love for you to talk about. Well, Seth has done a great job for us, playing center, making calls. Uh, there's a lot on his plate, you know, every week. But you're talking about a fine young man now who is really, really smart, has a great academic record. Uh, if there's anybody in this world that deserves to be an academic All-American, and be up for the Campbell Award and things like that, it's, it's Seth. Coach, let's spend some time learning about Seth McLaughlin. I'm Seth McLaughlin, I'm from Buford, Georgia, and I play offensive line. I got my undergraduate degree in finance, and I'm getting my master's in sports hospitality management. Uh, the next step, hopefully, is to play in the NFL, and then after that, start the career search. Uh, I know there's a life after football, and uh, I'm interested to see what that's gonna look like. You know, I just want to be able to provide for my family and give back to others. I wanted to come to Alabama to play for Coach Saban, and you know I was a low-ranked three-star coming out of Buford High School, so I thought if I ever had the aspiration of playing in the NFL, I thought that Alabama would give me the best chance to play there. If I couldn't play here, then I definitely couldn't play in the NFL. Being coached by Coach Saban, you know, it's the reason why I came here. Um, I knew exactly what I wanted uh, out of a coach, and you know he's exceeded all those expectations. Uh, I, I played a lot of games for him and he believed in me to do a job and uh, I think that says a lot about you know the, the University of Alabama's program. I was seven years old. My older brother started playing middle school football. Uh, you know, I always watched my brothers play sports and I was always the youngest trying to play the sports that they were playing. So after watching my brothers play, I really wanted to play. I started playing football at eight years old. I think being the youngest of the family, I'm always the baby. Everybody's been my biggest supporter. So even my older brothers used to pick on me a lot and you know, kind of bully me and shove me around a little bit, but now I'm the biggest in the family and I outweigh them all by about 100 pounds now. What's special to me about the University of Alabama is just the love that the people have here for uh, football and their student athletes. Um, you know, you go anywhere and everybody's giving you a roll tide. You go anywhere in the state, you're getting a roll tide. You go anywhere in the south and you're getting a roll tide from people. So. Um, you know, it's great that how many people love you. Uh, to the fans, you know, I love y'all. I appreciate all the support that y'all give us. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's entertainment. And I really just hope that we can give it all out for y'all. And, um, you know, we show y'all the same love that y'all show us week in and week out. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Ford. 
The Ford F-150 helps make your game day traditions bigger and better, season after season. Coach, we always talk about what's next, and it's great to have what's next being a championship game. You win the state title, now a chance to win an SEC crown. Yeah, well, you know, the SEC championship game is one of the finest competitive venues I've ever been a part of. Uh, I think there's a reality check for us today in terms of what we did well and how we can build on it and what we need to improve on um, because it's going to be a tough game and Georgia's got a really good team and we're going to have to play to our best um, and I think we're capable and I believe in this group uh, but we got to get some things fixed and we're excited about having the opportunity. I'm proud of this team to go from where they were in the beginning of the season to where they are now to win in 11 games to win in the West, to having a chance to play for the SEC championship game. Couldn't be proud of a group of young men. And winning that state championship as well. Coach, congratulations today. Best of luck next week. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on the Nick Saban Show presented by TruckWorks. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Coke with zero sugar and refreshingly delicious. Is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. And by Trustmark, people you trust, advice that works.